I want to show you what is possibly the best electric guitar in the world for the money. It's the end result of a 30-year collaboration between one guitar player and one builder. We're going to talk to that guitar player, and we're going to listen to this guitar that is so great and so affordable. <laughs> This is the David Grissom DGT-SE. I'm using the HDRX 20 watt amp through an early 70s vintage Marshall 412 cabinet. For that solo, I was pushing it here with the horse meat. Let me turn it off and just show you the amp. It's at the edge of breakup. <laughs> But if I move it to the neck, let me show you how clean it sounds. So let's talk about the elephant in the room, which to me is how good this guitar sounds. So for any of the tones so far, I didn't change a single knob or setting on the HDRX20. Let's do a quick review. For the solo on whipping post at the beginning of this video, it was the bridge pickup and the pedal at pretty high gain. Then I turned the pedal off, stayed on the bridge pickup. For 10 years gone by Zep, it was just edge of breakup and guitar and amp only, just the guitar and the amp. And then for the Hendrix tune, I flipped to the neck pickup and once again, just the guitar and the amp nothing else. So Sweetwater and PRS have given me this guitar to give away to you. So click the link below, join the contest and win the guitar. We're going to talk to David Grissom for one minute, and then we're going to do extreme close-ups of the guitar. So I realized that you've actually designed three guitars now. I want people to know how long this process has taken, how big a part of a history you have with PRS. You and Paul became such good friends that you and he actually, and the company, designed the McCarty together. Then you designed the DGT after they said, well, hey, don't you want a signature guitar? And now this is your third PRS. I didn't meet Paul till 87, but we immediately started bouncing ideas off each other. And the McCarty came about when I was working with Mellencamp, and I was looking for some sounds that were a little less mid-rangey, a little more full range, maybe a little more low end, and also pickups that weren't quite as mid-rangey, a little more PAF-y. It came out awesome. That was January 92, and I believe the McCarty came out in uh, 94, I think. Right after they made that guitar, they made me one with tremolo, which I played more than the stop tailpiece version. But I was playing it all the time. I was doing a lot of sessions in Nashville. I'd hand it to Kenny Greenberg or Pat Buchanan, and they were like, if I could get this guitar, I would play PRS. <laughs> I'm going to start with the flame maple top, which you can only see from the side. Pretty cool. Moving on to the gold top finish, you can see the fine metallic sparkle if you get up really close. The carve of the top is called the shallow violin. Here we have the PRS six screw tremolo that floats but always comes back to exactly the same resting position. I can attest to that. Three knobs, two for volume. The push pull knob for the 75% coil split that David likes because it gives him more of a Gretsch sound. It's not 50-50, it's a little bit stronger. These are called DGTS pickups. Now we move to the neck. It's a set neck with a 10 inch radius, 22 frets, and a 25 inch scale. The neck is mahogany with a rosewood fingerboard and moon inlays. Check these guys out. 
The frets are medium jumbo, we believe 55-110. We have lightweight tuners for tone, and whatever the nut is made out of, David and I were kind of laughing that uh, it works so well for bending and using the tremolo and keeping the guitar in tune. We kind of were wishing that we had this same nut on some of our other guitars. So David was constantly bringing his evolving signature guitar to sessions and showing it to the guitar players, but he was also showing it to engineers and asking them to do a blind test against another guitar that he always brought, which was his original 59 Les Paul. You owned a 59 Les Paul, and I've heard you say you took it to sessions like 25 times. You took it to sessions and you asked engineers to do a blind test between your PRS and the 59 Les Paul. And without question, they always chose the PRS in blind tone tests. They always chose the PRS. I sold that guitar and I sold it five years too early. And now, you know, of course, it's funny how when you sell something, immediately the guitar becomes like infinitely better than it ever was when you were playing it. Now, the pickup design for the DGT core also took years. His guitar tech built a jig where they could slide in the pickups, hook up the raw wires, and evaluate and listen back to back. They went through dozens and dozens of pickups. The original DGT pickups, I mean, that was like a two-year process where I have the guy that's worked on my guitars for 30 years here in Austin, Ed Reynolds, built a test guitar. He would put the pickups in this, what he called a jig. It was these pieces of wood and they slid in the top of the guitar and then he had alligator clips that would connect to terminals. The beauty of that was we could literally, you slide the pickup in, put the alligator clips on and listen. And then you can change into another set of pickups just as quickly. The DGTSE shares the same coil tap technology from years of iterations of David's signature core guitar. And so my description to Paul was, what I'd like is a 75% coil tap. If you were to line up DGTs from the first one to 2022, you would hear an evolution in that single coil sound. Not so much the humbucking sound, but the single coil sound. And now I think that we've arrived at a place where to me, the coil tap, it's got this kind of Gretchy thing to it. Yeah. When I was in LA the last time working on the McMurtry record, you were, and you loaned, you loaned me some great phenomenal instruments. I played your Duesenberg and I fell in love with that sound. To me, it gets a little in more in that direction. It's infinitely usable for me. It's, it's not like, oh, I've lost all my bottom end and volume. And in the studio, especially, it's almost like having another guitar with me. I and mean, this is like basically 25% of the cost of a core model. You know, I remember meeting David just like it was yesterday. I was at a vintage guitar show and there was this guy in one of the vintage booths playing a guitar and he had real character in his hands. He was something. So hang with me for three more minutes. I'm gonna show you a highlight reel that I made. I never do this, but I made a highlight reel from the three-part series on PRS's YouTube channel. It gave me so much respect for how the guitar is made, where it's made, and what it took to make it. Also, in addition to the contest where you can win the guitar, there's also a link for the masterclass, 14-day free trial, 150 hours, 1,800 videos, and a brand new 100 video beginners course. One of the cool things about working with David is he can pick up one guitar and then another guitar and feel ten thousandths of an inch difference front to back in a neck. He doesn't know it's ten thousand, but he can say this one's a little bit bigger and he's never wrong. I didn't just rubber stamp this. This is something that I've really been involved in and I'm really, really proud of and grateful that PRS is, is, is doing this. I agreed to an SE model in principle because the idea that more people could afford to have an instrument of that quality really appealed to me. The SE now is light years ahead of anything that I was able to get my hands on the first couple of years that I was playing. So it's really amazing how far the ability to make a quality instrument at a reasonable price has come. When Jack first called me about the SE DGT, I was a little bit hesitant. I did not want to put my name on anything that I was not going to feel comfortable playing. 
But the more we talked and the more I realized what was going on at the new factory, I became uh, interested really, really quickly. PT Court is located in Mojikerto, which is near Surabaya in East Java, Indonesia. If you haven't seen our factory video, you should because you'll see that there's about 450 workers every day working only on PRS SE Series guitars. All right, gold's hard to do. We'll see here. How'd they do? Damn, <laughs> it looks just like mine. The dark back is perfect. That's hard to do. You know, it was funny because getting these first two prototypes, they, they sat around my house for three or four days until our Zoom meeting. Just to prove that I didn't open them, I'm gonna undo the, sta the big staples. Oh, wow. Just so you know that I didn't peek. I think when, it, when I actually got the box cutters out, to open the boxes up reminded me of sitting in my apartment in 1987 with that gold top that Paul gave me. It was the same sort of excitement and anticipation. And ultimately, after that first 15 seconds or 20 seconds of playing the guitar, like I can, I can just tell that they got it right. The feel and playability were great. And after about 30 seconds or a minute, I wasn't sure whether I was playing the, the SE or the core one that was sitting right next to me. So it was just like, it's all here. Hey guys, a lot of the time YouTube will bring you my videos even though you're not subscribed. If you get the chance, click the subscribe button and ring the bell.